Hello and welcome to the Craftsman Show. My name is your host, the Craftsman. Today we're going to talk about how can you make cabochon pendants for necklaces and cabochon jewelry. And first of all, I've been saying this wrong for a long time. I started out calling it cabochons. And I saw somebody else say, no, it's cabochons. Cabochons. Captain Shawns. Cat Papa John's. Anyway, you will need just a few items to complete this project. First of all, you're going to need a bezel. You can get yours at the uh, Hobby Lobby, but I got mine on Amazon and they came out the price per each one was a lot cheaper. So if you're going to be doing these in bulk, or especially if you think you might be trying to sell some of these, then it might be best to get them in uh, bulk off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. And also, you're going to need some glass caps, a cabochon. Nextly, you're going to need some Mod Podge, the Mission of Magic. Oh, yeah. I got this just because I like the name of it. Come to find out, you can do all kinds of things with it. You will also need some type of glue. Now, I picked up the E6000 because everybody said that, that that's the best glue for crafts, for jewelry. But personally, I didn't like some of the things that was in it. I found out about this crafter's pick. And this kind of glue right here is non-toxic. Ain't got no fumes and nothing to be concerned with apparently. And also from what I had read from my fellow crafters, it's supposedly really strong. And then you're going to need some type of paper. And this is probably the funnest part of the whole thing. So brace yourself for how much fun this can be. You can buy the papers at the Hobby Lobby. A big old pack like this. You can buy you a little pad like this little collected mix. Collected mix. You can buy some plain papers. Or you can do this where it gets kind of interesting. Go look through some old magazines and catalogs. You can even use a family photo. Here's some catalogs I had got. What I like to do is take my glass cab and I like to move it over the page and see, hey, how this gonna look? Let me see, let me try this. Look at this, let's see what this one gonna do. Hello, it's the oatmeal. I like oatmeal a lot. Look at how this might would look. But I don't know that people would really like that. Let's see what else we can find. Flip, flip. Keep looking through all kinds of things. Look at this. Hello. Or you can always just print whatever you want. Scales are real popular. People be talking about mermaid scales. So I printed me out some of these to show y'all what you can do with just a printer. But for this video, I decided to use some texture paper. And I put my cabbage on where I think it's going to look good. And then I cut it out. This is a one inch punch that matches the one inch size of my cabochon. But you can always just use scissors. All right, go ahead and lay you down a white sheet of paper to protect your workspace. Get your image and your glass cabochon. I like to clean my cabochon with some alcohol and then you want to drop it one time to make sure that it still uh, holds up good. Uh, but don't really do that. And now, Get your dimension of magic. Come on! And look, this way you don't want to do too very much. I put what I call a little bit bigger than a drop. It's about a drop and a half on it. Right in the middle of the image. Then, take your glass, cabbage on, and push it down. And squeeze a thin layer. Make all the bubbles go out to the edge. Take your time on this. Push it down real firm and good. And then kind of move it around so it don't stick to the paper. Turn it, turn it, keep pushing it, working. Make sure you got it good and squished out. I like to flip it over and round out the edges because sometimes the cabochon don't be flat all the way around. They got a smooth edge on the back side. And then let it dry. Dimension of magic dry pretty quick. After about 10 or 15 minutes, it should be relatively dry. Then I go ahead and coat the back of it. What we're doing right now is sealing the back of the paper. The reason why you do this is because whenever you're going to glue it later, you don't want the glue to soak into your image because it can darken it, change the color. Let that layer dry, and then you're going to do the whole thing again after that one dry. Put you another layer, another coat. 
I like to do that about at least two times, sometimes three times. And I like to get it sealed good so I know when I put my glue up on it, it ain't gonna soak through the back of the paper. Now it's time to glue it. I like to put a little dab on my bezel and then put a little dab on the back of the cabochon paper. Rub it around, rub it, rub it, smooth it around. And then make sure your fingertips is clean, as clean as possible. And then place your image, but don't push too hard. Rotate it to get it just like the orientation, like you how you like it. And get the fingertips clean. And once you got a place, then you're gonna put the hurdy girder on it and make sure it's sitting down good into the bezel. If you get some glue squeezed out on the edges, don't be worrying about it because we're going to clean that up later. Make sure it's pressed down firm and good into it. And look, look at what it looks like. What I like to do is let it dry just a little bit, but not all the way. And then I take me some alcohol and a little paper towel. And I get it on there, but not too, too much alcohol. You don't want it to seep down into the crevice. You just want to have a... a a little bit of alcohol on the surface of your paper towel. And then I like to go around the edges and clean it. And make sure there ain't no uh, a little uh, glue residuals all sitting around. And I like to clean the surface and get it good and shiny like. Once you did that, now you can do whatever you want with the pendant. Do you want to make a necklace? You can use, a uh, craftsman like to use a little cord. This kind of cord right here that comes with all kind of different colors, different patinas. This is a fun project, y'all. This is easy and simple, and it just requires a few little things, but these make really wonderful gifts, especially if you use somebody's personal photograph. That's a customized and a way to show them that, hey, here go your photograph. And then it's behind a piece of uh, a cabbage hall, and that kind of preserve it and make it stand out. Look at the dimension. Another thing I like to do with it is not just paper, but you can even use wood. If you got the capability to cut a real thin piece of wood, like on a bandsaw, or that you can get hold of some wood veneer, look at this one I made out of some maple. This is about the prettiest maple that I have ever found, and I think it turned out real good. Well, that's another edition of the Craftsman Show, and I just want to say thank y'all so much for keeping on looking at my, uh, my little videos I've been doing, and uh, comment. Y'all messages mean a lot to me. Comments, I try to respond to everybody. Um, unless you say something real uh, crazy, then I might not know how to respond. But 99.5, 99.9% of the time, I will respond to everybody that I can. And I thank y'all so much. And have a blessed day. Come on.